He has a really good ability. Uh, obviously in the corners, uh, he was knocking down a lot of threes today in practice. Did a really good job on catch and shoot uh, situations. Uh, at his side, the 7 1, and his ability to stretch the floor, it does uh, provide a unique skill set. What's it like seeing him walk in the gym, just seeing his body type? <laughs> just his weight and his height and what he's able to do on the court. Obviously, you can tell that he's very young. Um, he, hasn't, he, hasn't, he hasn't filled out, does not have any baby fat, so I don't know, you know. But obviously, like I said, he has a very unique skill set, uh, the ability to shoot at that size, uh, space the floor, handle it in some pick and roll situations, um, adds a lot of versatility to our lineup. Do you have a plan for how to use Dyson? How would you describe how you're going to use him and, and sort of what you expect out of him? He provides so much versatility for us. We can use him in a multitude of ways, quite frankly, um, as a primary handler, secondary handler. Uh, at the end of the day, he's a basketball player. Uh, so he makes the next best play, whatever that is. And like I said the other day, he plays at his own pace. He plays at, at, at under control um, for the most part. So after a week of practices, or a couple of day of practices, two a days, uh, it's time to see him against other competition right now because he's looking really good against our guys. But is it your goal to sort of put him in different spots to sort of see all of that? Yes, yes. So as, as I said, he'll be, he'll be the point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward. He'll, he'll play all positions um, and even some small ball five at times. You, you know, we'll see what the lineup looks like. But it is at this time a, a year to, um, especially in summer league, to get him comfortable um, and then also see what else he can do in, in terms of um, being a primary uh, ball handler and a secondary ball handler. I know that Fred's working with him right now. Yes. Is it fair or unfair to think Fred Vincent's working with him? He's going to become a great shooter overnight. I mean, he's had so much success with so many different guys. Well, I'm, <laughs> Fred is a master at, at what he does in terms of um, getting guys shots and giving them the confidence um, to go out there and knock shots down at a high clip. Um, so it will only serve his benefit going forward, um, working with Fred. So I, I obviously the, the bar being what it is with Fred, the, the guys that he's worked with in the past and the level of success they've had, I, I don't see why, because Dyson's gonna put the work in. Um, so the results are gonna be there. And just like with anything though, it's just gonna take time. So don't expect anything next week, but just know that obviously like with Herb, you put the time in, and it's that old expression, we've all been around sports long enough, you, you get out what you put in. Um, and I know that with, with uh, Fred, um, Dyson, they're going to put the work in, and they're gonna get, you're going to see the results. But his mechanics are pretty good right now, aren't they? Yes. 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 <laughs> Fred would probably be the person to uh, speak to us uh, even more specifically with specific mechanics. But um, obviously his shot profile, where his release point, all of those things are, are really, really good. What do you so. think about the job uh, EJ has done so far, Justin, just getting used to his role? He's been very physical, um, plays with a high motor, uh, someone who can finish uh, all three levels, quite frankly, pull up jumpers, knock down three, can play out of the post, does a really good job making rotations defensively. So uh, he's providing energy and hustle out there, and then that usually translates to him being in the right spots. Uh, so all of those things uh, bold well for him. From your experience, can you teach a guy to be a great shooter? Is that possible? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, that's one of those things that um, sometimes people get caught up on that, oh, a guy can't shoot and move on. Uh, I, I've seen it in my experience where guys um, can either change their shot, their actual shot profile, the way that they shoot the basketball, and the results will follow. I, I've seen that um, in my experience. So and especially when you're working with someone like Fred Vinson. Do you, you and your brother have spent 20 years now, I guess, as players and coaches and scouts in this league. This is just kind of a general question, nothing specific. Mm -hmm. But all the news and the soap opera of the off season, do you pay attention to it? Do you not pay attention to it? Are there ever moments that you go, wow, I can't believe stuff like that happens in kind of the intrigue that is the NBA off season? I'm like Sea Biscuit. Horse, you gotta have your blinders on. Stay focused on the task at hand. So my job is to coach the <laughs> coach the summer league team and get our guys prepared um, and locked in to go out there and execute on both ends of the floor. With a guy like EJ, is he a guy that you know he's gonna get a lot of minutes in in Las Vegas? Is he a guy that you sort of put an asterisk by that he's gonna play a lot? I think that all of our guys, quite frankly, are gonna get an opportunity out there on the floor. Um, 
obviously with our young guys, we want to give them reps and as many reps as possible. That being said, uh, as I mentioned the other day, um, Jose, Najee, Trey are not going to play the duration. So a lot of guys, all of our guys, are going to get multiple reps and multiple opportunities to go out there and show what they can do. Is part of the goal to get Dyson and EJ on the court with those guys at the same time? Maybe. <laughs> We're talking rotations? Uh, <laughs> yes, obviously. To uh, get some familiarity going and uh, get some comfort playing with each other. You do want to try to establish that early, and they've done that here in practice, and we'll continue to do that in summer league. And EJ also talked about uh, college. They were more switch everything, and you guys are more of an ice and down screens type of team. Uh, is that part of the value he brings is the ability to do a little bit of everything in those pick and roll coverages? Absolutely. Um, as I mentioned, at the when he's at the four, we do our primary defense is one through four, doing a lot of switching with the fives. We don't switch as much. Um, it really depends on the versatility at who's at the five. So obviously, if Jackson's at the five, if Larry Nance is at the five, and you have EJ, then you can switch one through four, or excuse me, one through five. If Jonas Valanciunas is at the five, you're asking a lot of him to switch on to a primary ball handler. Um, so we want to put our guys in a position to be successful. But like I said, having versatility, having someone like EJ who has the capability of defending the screener and defending the, the primary ball handler, um, adds us or affords us the opportunity to switch one through five. So you want to give the guys a base package first and then you build from there uh, defensively. Is there someone, I know we'll focus on the draft picks, but last year, you know, Jose was undrafted and we saw him in Vegas and it was kind of this scrappy guy. Is there someone that maybe has caught your eye so far that isn't one of the players that was drafted or just somebody that you didn't know much about coming in here? It's only been a few practices. Yeah, really good question. I, I'd say all of our guys, quite frankly, have played really well and played hard. Um, I'm not going to say just one particular player, but I would just say that all of our guys, what I'm most impressed with is uh, how much fight and spirit and competitiveness all of our guys, top to bottom, have brought to each practice. And that's only going to make them better and make us better as a whole.